Holy crap. That is a lot of stuff on the reviewing table tonight. <laughs> and you're not even seeing it all. It goes from the full left of the table to the full right of the table, from the front to the back. It is a mess of Glocks and a mess of holsters. And yet, we are going to make sense of it all in this feature length video on my favorite carry system for one of my all time favorite still combat handguns, the Glock, in all its iterations. If you are in a hurry, this might not be a super quick video. Like I said, it will be feature length. I would guess around 50 minutes to an hour. Yep. Lots to talk about. Lots of really cool systems. Maybe a couple that disappointed me over the years. You're looking at about 15 years of carry experience in Glocks. I have been carrying Glocks uh, concealed as a concealed carry permit holder since 1992 is when I started and so I've been carrying ever since then and I've learned a lot along the way. I'm still a value dude so I go for high value options that work for me and you're seeing some right now and some I've talked about before in other videos but I'm, I'll hit it again because I want this to be a standalone video product for dudes that can come and get an idea of some carry systems for their favorite Glock. Now a couple ground rules. Um, Usually when I start talking holster systems, some guys get excited and they want me to review their favorite. No, I mean, I've already spent probably on the table, you're looking at a thousand, couple thousand bucks over the years. Especially since TMP and holster systems. And these, these are all purchased, they're not comped to me. I buy them, I'm free and independent in the project, I always have been. I can say good things and bad things, I, I don't owe anybody anything. But... If your holster system works for you, that's great, but don't say, dude, you need to review this. No, I don't. I'm not going to. I already have too much crap. I don't send me anything. Another ground rule. Don't send me your Kydex. Hey, I make Kydex. Newsflash, everybody makes Kydex. Allie, my dog, has Kydex holsters and her own website. <laughs> okay, I'm kidding on that. But you get my drift. Everybody makes it. And there's lots of great Kydex out there. It's not, it's not special. Anybody can do it. Anybody can get a press. And a lot of people do. And people have their favorites. You know, oh, dude, you, you got to try this holster. Well, I've tried, obviously, a lot of holsters. And they're pretty excellent. I'm happy. I don't need to go looking for more. Spending more money, having more crap to store that eventually I have to find a way to get rid of. I'm, I'm mounded. Literally, as you can see, mounded in this stuff. So, hey, you need to review this whole... No, I don't. Uh-uh. I'm reviewing a lot right now, and you probably won't get a Glock holster video for another 10 years. <laughs> so enjoy this one. That's ground rule, man. I'm serious, too. I, I've, I mean, I've spent a lot of time researching, buying, from usually from Amazon, links in the bottom. I buy them just like you do in Amazon. And, uh, yeah, I got a few things to say. We're going to start off, actually with the Galco shoulder holsters because I want to clear them off as we work our way through the mound of stuff. Uh, and before I do that, let me see how many Glocks we got on the table. I've got one, two, three, four, five. I think there's another one here. Six? I think six. There might be a, some more peeking around. Uh, what we're going to see mostly are Glock 17s. I got a 19 right here. I've got a 43. And I actually have a Glock 20 10 mil underneath there. Actually, I probably got like seven or eight Glocks we're going to see. And they're, they're important players for this because we're going to check fit. We're going to check retention. I'm going to give you a couple tidbits on each holster system of things I liked about it. Mostly it's good. I've gravitated to systems that work. Maybe a couple were disappointing. And I'll try to remember what I did not like about that holster system. Like I said at the outset, these are value systems. I think several products in the holster arena are way overpriced. When we start talking about hybrid systems like the Kydex, inside the waistband, leather, things, there's so many different companies that do them. And again, people go, well, you need to try this one. This is the one I bought and I want validation for my purchase. I'm like, no, it's no better or worse than a lot of others being 
put together. They're good. We'll mention a couple brands, and if I miss your favorite brand, sorry. There's a lot of similarity between them. I think one of the things that really attracts me to a holster manufacturer and Galco is key in my way of thinking is they have a broad line. It fits a wide variety of guns. In this video, we are talking Glocks. But what if we have an XDS? What if we have a PPS? What if we have an unusual pistol? What if we have a Canuck TP9? A good holster maker will have a broad product line that will fit those in a wide variety of holster systems. Maybe it's inside the waistband, belt slide, appendix carry, shoulder holster. You get the picture. Speaking of shoulder holsters, if I were to meet you in person, we do a gear check and I am amazed how many people know this. I ask them, hey, what do you think I'm carrying and what holster system do you think I'm carrying it in? Almost always you guys get it right. That shows me guys have watched the show. They know and I'm really consistent in my preferences for good reason because they work for me. And usually when I say, hey, what holster system am I carrying? They will say you're carrying probably a PF9 and that's no longer true. I don't carry PF9 very much anymore. But then they'll say Glock 43 and a Galco Classic Light. And I go, rock on, you are correct. In the summertime, in, in the wintertime when I have more clothing, I, I upgun. I'm doing a 17, I'm doing a P226, I'm doing a Glock 20. But now it's, the weather's warmer when I'm, when I'm recording this. So this is kind of my go-to carry piece. I have talked to some team peers that have tried the Galco Classic Light system and super quick. It's super thin suede. Look how thin it is. It doesn't add any thickness to the gun. It's super comfortable. If you're in a moist environment, high humidity environment, eh, you know, maybe it won't be that comfortable because it is, it is a natural material and maybe it can get moist or sweaty. I live in a pretty dry climate for me. And so in Utah, it works. You know, it works great. Hides under the shirt. I've talked about it lots. The advantages are that it's so simple. You know, we just throw it on. Yes, we have to take the shirt off and on, whoop de doo But for me, it's a lot quicker than putting an IWB system on, especially with my man pack. Still wearing it, deal with it, love it. Way more stuff carried than you have. Check my latest tweet on that, by the way. That's pretty funny. I just emptied everything out, took a picture of it on my Twitter account and said, hey, this is my EDC today. And it's a lot. I mean, you're talking like freaking five knives, each one a different purpose. But the Galco Classic Light is comfortable. And with a gun this light and thin, dude, come on. It rules. Downside is it's not that fast. So if I'm going into harm's way or if I'm going into a situation where I think I may need my gun quicker, I don't care what it is, I probably don't sport a shoulder system under the shirt. Maybe externally I would, because that's pretty quick. But if I have to fight through a shirt, do a Superman rip open, slower, slower. I give you that. IWB belt slide, a lot quicker. Galco Classic Light for all models is such a win. What do I have here? There's another one peeking out. Uh, this is not a classic light. These aren't either. I only have one on the table, so this one. But it's available for a Glock 19, 23, 17, 22, and full-size guns. And it doesn't cost that much. Amazon prices, like I get them, are pretty inexpensive. Um, if you live in Utah, you can drop by Gunny's Gun Store that helps me with the gun show here. And he has a pretty good selection of Galco. And check his prices out. They're pretty good. I think I saw, I don't think I know, I saw a P226 Galco Classic Light for 64 bucks on his uh, shelf. There you go. That's pretty good. Classic Light, man. Top of the order. Top of the batten order. Next up is the Jackass Rig. Love that name. Uh, you're noticing, by the way, I do have labels on them. It is, I am a gear reviewer, yes. But that's not the only reason. When you have a lot of different handguns, a lot of different combat systems. I, I'm to the point now, I just need to label everything because otherwise like, what's this go to? And I don't want to go through the trial and error fitting. So that's what you're going to see. Uh, most of them, not all of them are labeled. So here we have, I think a third gen Glock riding in a Galco Jackass system. Very similar to the classic light in the suede straps, which are relatively easy to adjust. They have these brass screws that will adjust to the cant you want 
and to your torso length, easy enough. With a jackass system versus a classic light, we're gonna have double, or I should say dual offside mag pouches. With a classic light, you had a single, which for civilian rule of law carry is fine by me. Because I don't expect going through that many rounds, a single's fine. But for whatever reason, they said, hey, for a jackass rig, maybe it's for a law enforcement officer, double mag pouches. The nice thing about that is it does offset the weight a little bit. So we have two mags on this side. If they're full, they're going to offset the weight. It carries very nicely. With all these shoulder holster systems, I do not find that I need a tie down. So they do have provisions for a tie down. I have purchased and tried the Galco leather tie downs and I find they just get in the way. You don't need them. It's very secure. You can actually run with it. You can climb fences with it. Will it flop around a little bit if we turn to the side? Sure it will. If you really think you need a lockdown, then put the leather straps on, put around your belt. And if not, you could just make some of 550 paracord, right? Easily done. Just a thought. Uh, the Jackass rig, the one thing I really love about it, I talked about in another video, is it doesn't carry in a horizontal presentation. It actually, because of the angle of the strap, look at the attachment points, will carry muzzle up. And so this width on a full-size handgun is minimized. So even a G17 carries pretty good. I mean, the Glock is not the thinnest gun around. We all know that. The 9mm versions are going to be about 1.18 inches in width. If you add a little bit of grip tape, like I, these are decal grips, love them on a third gen, a little bit more, perhaps. But when you do the Jackass rig, it carries really, really good. I've had this gun on, and I've met Team Peers. I ask them what I have, and they always go, like I said, PF9, Glock 43, and I go, nope, it's a G17 today in a Jackass. It just works. For the money, it's a total win. So... Galco does so many good things, and I'm not like rah, 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 Galco. We have a lot of different brands we're going to talk about, but they're making my favorite holster systems and have been for 20 years, and they're making in the breadth of stuff that I like. By the way, look at how nicely finished this leather is. I got that really dark brown in this coloration. I think it has a second cool thing going on. I mean, it's a kind of a pride of ownership, but this isn't a rig that's going to cost you 200 bucks, 300 bucks, it's a lot less. Galco Jackass Rig, love it. And here we see, this is a Jackass Rig on a Glock 20. So, and I started carrying a Glock 20 because, one, I love the 10 mil cartridge, I love it. And then in the Galco Rig, I have a full size 20 and it's angled up, it carries. It's wider than a 9 mil. That's a disadvantage. Every system has a dis disadvantage. Your, and your approach may be different than mine because of your body style. You know, where, where do you carry weight? Are you tall? Are you fat? Are you short? Maybe uh, this system doesn't work for you. I get it. We're going to cover a lot of systems. I guarantee you some will work for you. And that's why there's so many systems to choose from. This is a jackass for a Glock 20. Two offside mag uh, magazines and just consider for a moment the firepower of this rig dudes you have a full size 10 mm you have three mags one magazine is 10,000 foot pounds of energy this is a serious rig and so if I carry this externally not under the shirt this is GTW this is go to war ready all day long it's fast. Once you break it in and carry a rig, it will draw out quickly. Carried uh, occasionally. I don't carry the Glock 20 all the time. Definitely not in the summer. It's just too big. People can see it. I got to keep going because we got a lot more holster systems to do. Jackass rig. Oh, it's nice. And again, if I find the links to the popular Glocks, they'll be in the description below. If you use those links, cool. Maybe I'll buy some more Glock systems and review them later. Maybe. I got to sell all these first or get rid of them this is a g19 4 gen and it's running in the quintessential of all galco holsters the miami classic and that is a great rig very similar to the jackass except it does carry horizontally but with a g19 the horizontal carry is not a problem it's a very short overall length gun very short so it has all the benefits of it i've used this one a lot 
I've carried it a lot. This is one of my all-time favorite carry rigs, to be honest with you. The Glock 19 and a Miami Classic. I think it's comfortable. I don't think about it when it's on. I've been home doing some stuff, and I go, oh, I still got my Glock on. Again, like I said through the years, that's when you know your system is good. That you come home and you're not like just rushing to get it off. Oh my gosh, I'm sweating. It's heavy. I don't like it. No, you just run around. Maybe you're talking to the wife, talking to the kids. You're doing some some stuff out in the garage. You go, oh, I still got my gun on. Comfortable system, bro. That's how you know. We're going to take this G19 out. Uh, I'm going to clear it because it's a hot gun and a hot system. And all these are actually, I'm just going to take the, the round out of the chamber. Uh, look at that. That's such a cool gun. G19. This is a, the one I reviewed a couple years back. I just freaking love the G19. Sick. Love the holster system too. Moving along though. Recently, uh, I went down to my bins where I store my holsters. By the way, this is a Godfather. Protec and red. Sick. That's our come along knife for the tabletop review out of the TMP collection. Long discontinued. And the watch is the Japanese domestic market Casio PRG600 Safari. Woo, I like that watch. Woo, it's awesome. And the knife. And we're dudes, man. We just like cool stuff, right? <laughs> this is your, uh, what do you call it? The QVC for the ladies? This is our QVC, man. Guns, knives, watches, and lots of other cool stuff. Oh, I lied. I do have a classic light and a G26. God, this is my old 1994, whenever it was, mid-90s G26. Hot, no doubt. Yeah. Yep, it is. But this is, see, this is how the system will wear super quick. I mean, it wears so nice. And I've sweated in this so much. I mean, I wear it in summer all the time. And I've got the Heine straight eights on this sucker, by the way. And that is still the A-grip synthetic suede material on there. Okay, cool. Love it. See, we do have a few Glocks on the table. Maybe some more will pop out there. I've got some non-Glocks you may spot there. And there's a reason why. We'll get to it. I went on... What I was saying is I went down to my storage of plastic holsters. I have a bin for plastic holsters. I have a bin for leather holsters. And for a, a vehicle system that I was doing and fabricating, namely in a vehicle, a car, I needed a Serpa and I found, wow, I'm really kind of short on nine millimeter Serpa holsters. I thought I had a ton and I don't. This is one from when I first started TMP and I cut this one back because it had this big protective shield over it. It was ridiculous. It's a G17 system. And let's see, I'll take this Glock 17 out. Yep, double check in. So anyways, there you go. I cut it down. And I was like, well, I'm short. And I went out searching to say, well, I hope they still make that system because there have been so many others uh, made, so many different brands. And I was wondering if, you know, perhaps people just got tired of the Serpa. I am happy to report that is not the case, and Serpa is better than ever. And I'm also not ashamed at all to say it is still one of my all-time favorite holster systems, the Serpa. It is so nice. Here's why. Well, and this is a Serpa Sportster, I think it's called. And in Amazon, I spent like 21 bucks on this. And it comes with a paddle. It also comes with a belt slide. And which I don't have, but you can just unattach these three screws, one, two, three, belt slide comes on, and then it has retention tabs for your belt length. You'll take a pair of sharp nose pliers, twist these, and adjust them in these holes for your belt. So if you're wearing a narrow belt, it will attach to that, and it has a deep retention right here. So it comes on really quick, and yet, unless you use a special technique, it does not come off easily. Super comfortable. You can adjust the cant on these Blackhawk Serpas. They weigh almost nothing. And I still think they just have amazing retention. Let's see, to check that one. Amazing retention. I remember when I was talking Serpas early on in TMP, people liked them and then something happened. I, I think I still talk Serpas and guys, well, they, you know, I don't like Serpas. You know, I don't. I think there was a discussion once upon a year. Well, there's guys that do ADs when they press this and I've just never ever seen that and I think it's just too much internet crap there's so much disinformation out there out of all the guys I've seen run Serpas I've never had someone come out and pop 
like that. And if they do, it's a training issue. It's a competency issue. You should just come out here and it just puts your index finger if you're right-handed, or even you can get ones for lefties, same thing, your index and ready for the shot, right? And I've demonstrated it on camera through the years so many times. Such a great holster. This one is in gray, by the way, which is a very cool color. And this is a G17 one, also for a 34. So here's my ancient Glock 34. These ride really well too. They are secure like I'm attempting to explain. They just work. Uh, I was practicing drawing the other night just in the house out of the Serpa and I was amazed at how fast it is. The Serpa, even with the retention. And by the way, don't think it's only the Serpa. I'm not saying that. We're going to see a lot of holster systems like the Blade Tech. There's some Kydex offerings. There's some Galcos. There's some Safari Lands and some hybrid holsters that will be equally as fast, but don't think the retention slows you down. That's what I'm trying to communicate, okay? It doesn't. And these are inexpensive. These are so favorite of mine. Oh, and one thing I want to represent too, and this is super important, is they're versatile. Because you get, the, with a Sportster, you'll get this, and then you get the blade, or not the blade, but the belt slide with it. But then you can put like the adapter plate for this. So the, the quick connect on the Serpa. And so now on a vehicle system, you can drop some screws in your truck. And let's say you you want to run different pistols for different times. Well, if you have a Serpa, now it just pops in and pops out. And it's secure when it's in there. I'm trying to pop this out. See that? So that is another great thing I love about the Serpa system. And there's others that do it, but Serpa was the first, Blackhawk was. And look at how secure that is. Upside down, sideways. And when I do chest carry, I, I love running the Serpa. The downside would be that this adds dimension, so it pushes out from whatever mounting surface it is. If it's your chest, that's how far the gun will be out if it's a flat surface. It's, it's kind of is what it is. But they've stuck with it through the years, which tends to tell me two things. One, that it works. And another thing is customers like it and it continues to sell. And by the way, I totally get it. I mean, that's the way it should be. This is a Molly attachment, so it goes in oh, Molly right weapons there. if you were running it that way. So these Sportster holsters are the price point ones. They can still adapt to this. You're going to have to buy this separately, and it's not inexpensive. I mean, it's not a ripoff, but it's more money. You're going to have to spend some more money. This is, by the way, the, I think that's a black, no, that's actually a Galco magazine carrier for Glock. Lots of great magazine carriers. I just tend to simplicity. I like simple. This is rubber back, so it stays in position. You don't have, it. I think the fit is excellent. Feel that? You can't feel it, but take it from me. It's just perfect, and it's adjustable for friction, and then you have an infinite a cant adjustment with this single screw. This is a Galco Glock twin or double magazine pouch. Let's talk about a non-Galco product. This one is I bought off Amazon. It's for a Glock 43. This is a great holster and it only costs, I shouldn't say only, it's 33 bucks and it's made out of 0 .08 Kydex. It's a fierce, fierce defender and it's simple. Remember I told you I like simple. Look at that. I think the fit is perfect. Told you there's lots of great Kydex out there. So I, when guys start preaching, oh, well this, I only use this brand of Kydex because it's recommended by this elite operator. I'm just saying that's kind of horse poo poo. <laughs> there's so much good Kydex. This is a perfect example. And look at how simple this is. When we go to the hybrid system that's leather composite um, Kydex, the thing I don't like about them is they're hard to put on. That I have to untuck my shirt, I have to dick around with my belt, then I have to tuck it in, I have to make sure it's perfect forward and aft, but since I have double clips and it's riding forward and aft, it's a lot more logistics versus a single clip. Hey, if I'm just going to the store, this for me is quicker than that. And I'm talking just from my experience. I mean, I'm like, well, I, it's such a hassle to put some of those big, expansive, albeit comfortable holsters on, I don't dick around with it. I'll usually, I, I will usually go Galco Classic Light or something like this. Simple. I'm not going to a gunfight. I'm, I'm just, it's an emergency defensive tool and I'm prepared accordingly. 
Fierce Defender. Again, Link will be in the bottom. Up next, let's see. I'm gonna, I've talked about Galco a lot. So let's do, well, actually, let's go to these, the hybrid holsters. And there's a lot of brands out there. Again, some guys have their favorites. Uh, a few of them will be the Crossbreed Mini Tuck. This is a DeSantis uh, Intruder. Everyday Carry Galco King Tut is another option. I've always called them hybrid holsters. Basically what you have is a leather combined with some sort of metal clip and a really nicely fitted gun specific Kydex uh, riveted on holster. So this is for a G43. This is a DeSantis Intruder. That's retention, boys. It's like perfect. By the way, if you ever get a holster system and it's like, ah, it's really tight, one thing you might want to try is armor all the inside of it. And you might get it to release a little bit easier. It works with plastic and it works with Kydex. I've done it before. I don't have to do it with this one. It's fine. I've worn this and I've worn ones like it. The only thing I would say is it's a little bit warm in the summer. And the Galco King Tut has perforation or perforations through the leather and it breathes a little bit better. It's sturdy, it's comfortable, and it's stable too. And by the way, the Serpa is as well. I don't see the Serpas moving on my belt. It has a very consistent presentation. And what I mean, if, if you're new, what we're talking about is we don't want it to migrate on your belt. So maybe, you know, if our waist or let's say our hip is right here and all of a sudden it migrates back here. We want the holster system to be locked in and in a perfect world, we have trained with it. So we know how to reach it, we know how to access it. And it's in that muscle memory location. That's why consistency and stability is important. DeSantis is a good one. It has kind of a G-clip orientation, which is, I gotta tell you, it's a pain to take off. It's super easy to put on. All these clips that have come on under here, they won't come out, or the holster's not gonna come out when we draw, it stays. But when you get home, as you will, and <laughs> you take your whole system off, um, it's kind of a pain in my estimation. A lot of times I'm just undoing the belt and just sliding it, that's the quickest way. And that will lead us to another point we'll talk about with some other holster systems. Cause you may wonder, well, why is he advocating that one when these are better? That's why. Cause to take these off since they lock on so well, kind of a pain. Let's go to this one, and I don't know if this is a Glock. This is actually for an XDS. This is a Fox system, F-O-X-X. -X. It's okay. It's not the top quality, at least in this iteration. Maybe they've improved. Uh, one thing you want to know is if you look at this clip, you go, oh, that sucks. That holster would come out. Actually, the clips are almost secondary. When this is in position and wrapped around your waist and you cinched your belt up, the clips aren't really even needed. I'm just saying because you have a high leather friction pad right here that's up against your hip, especially when you start sweating. This actually locks into place pretty good. Now, if your shirt gets untucked and it's riding against your shirt, it will. I'm, this exact holster will work its way up because it's coming with the shirt that it was against. Hmm, interesting detail, Matt and Franchi. This is a Fox magazine carrier and this is a later one which shows me they've kind of improved their quality and one thing i like about the fox system is that it's not expensive it's inexpensive this is kind of important because sometimes you're going to spend money on one of these systems as i obviously have and you may not like it and the really the only way for you to learn for you your body style your carry style your gun of choice is to use it and if you're spending 150 bucks on every system, you're going to be spent a lot of money that might be thrown in the garbage. I don't think use holster systems sell at all. Nobody wants them. So what if you go out and spend 100 versus like this, what is this, 25 bucks? Get my point? Let's check the fit on this. This is a Glock 43 mag with a Turan Tactical base plate on it. Perfect fit. Now, I, I tend to look at a carrier like this for a single seven round in this case eight round magazine uh it's kind of overkill because this isn't a heavy thing it doesn't need a lot of support i've kind of and that's why this one doesn't have a lot of wear on it because i like i don't really need that i'll use like a uh, well like this and there's a pf9 there just for reference purposes but this is like a knife thing and it's like a clipped knife thing i got and i'll use that for a magazine because i can clip this on and off again it's lightweight i don't i don't need that 
You guys might rock, rock it. That's cool. The reason I have the PF9 on there is to represent an unknown brand. <laughs> I don't know who made this. Oh, yeah, I do. This is a Fox product again. Thank heavens, because I didn't label it. So this is available for Glock uh, pistols as well. That's why I put it on the table, so you can get it for Glock 43, 17, 19, 23. I don't know if for the big, big ones you can, but this is a later version with improved fit, and I wanted to give Fox credit for that because I showed you that XDS one. You're like, ah, oh, that's not that great. Look at it now. Just simple adjustable holes, and I talked about the clips already. Uh, having fought with these really difficult clips... Uh, I kind of kind of prefer these ones a little bit. I do. Fox holsters. And is this a crossbreed? No, this is a Shepard. Cool. I have it for a 9mm Glock, so we'll check it with this Glock 17. So this is a Shepard, made in the USA. I like how they labeled it. Thank you. I wish they'd all do that. Everyone should actually have it engraved what it's for, so the user, the purchaser, doesn't have to do it. So here comes a really cool, great Glock 17. And man, ooh. That fits good. It fits good. I almost think when we carry a larger Glock, if we're going to go inside the waistband, maybe these are the choice to have. I showed you that simple inside the waistband. Those work for the smaller Glocks, like a 43, even a 26. But when I go with a 17 or something, now we have more weight to distribute. And maybe it's best that way. And you can see this Shepard system has a forward cant built into it already. And none of these are super expensive. I think the DeSantis is a little bit overpriced. And by the way, I want to show you that. So this has a high front sight on it. It's not a suppressor sight, but sometimes you'll get rub. And this fits, but coming out, see there's a interference right there. That's something that you'd have to check. And so what I would do is uh, probably either exchange these sights out of here or not run this with this pistol. It's just kind of common sense, you know, check your interferences first. I was saying this one's a little bit pricey. It's like 80 bucks, a little bit under 80 bucks. To me, that's expensive. When I can go get an everyday carry holster, a Galco, King Tut, I actually didn't check the price on that. It might be around it. Uh, and actually I lied. Uh, the Crossbreed Mini Tuck is 77. This one, the DeSantis, I'm looking at my notes, is actually 48 bucks. So that's, a, that's more reasonable to me. So it's a crossbreed, a highly touted brand at one time. Oh, you got to get crossbreed. Dude, I heard that so many times. Every time I talk holsters, oh, crossbreed, 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 and finally did it. I'm like, yeah, it's a good product. I like crossbreed. No better than the other ones. Yeah, but it's cool, man. Everyone else likes it in my forum. So, so it's no better than the other ones. So I'm just being honest with you. Fox, I think we looked at that already. And then we go to Blade Tech. So these are very inexpensive, super lightweight holster systems, the Blade Tech, and they make a bunch of different ones. I'm going to show you, what do they call this? I think it's the Phantom on this one. I have some in package still. Yeah, it's a Phantom, and they may have made some changes because this one's been in our system for this exact reason, a tabletop review, and also TMP run and gun and stuff for a number of years, but they're simple. And so this is a loop over system. It is plastic, not Kydex, and it weighs nothing and it doesn't absorb moisture. If you watched my, what was it? Uh, not Hitman. It was one of the videos where I was shooting the Glock 19. Uh, maybe it was a Hitman shoot. It probably was. I was running a Phantom Blade Tech, and it worked okay. It's not my favorite holster, but. For what, 20 bucks? Yeah, it's pretty good. I could shake this out if I if I really popped it, but the retention is not horrible. And plus it's got two tensioning screws right here. And it's secure because you'll either thread your belt through that, simple, or uh, unsnap it like that, which is a mother to do, apparently. I like this. The Phantoms are cool. Uh, I, they're recommended, definitely. So try one out. I mean, if you bought it and tried it out and go, you know what, this sucks. You're only out 20 bucks. You know, you go, you didn't go out and, you know, a uh, Mitch Rosen, <laughs> you know, something super expensive. Here's one I've used a lot more. This is a 1722. It's the same one as before. Actually, it's not because this has a single retention. 
And I'm trying to see if that's Kydex. This one might be a Kydex version. Blatech Kydex. Look at how trim that is, though. It's not bad. And that's actually a lefty holster. See that? And I do have some lefties for loaning to crew members and stuff that don't have anything. Fierce Defender. Uh, I think we talked about that already. This is for a G26. I think we showed it already for a 43. Check this out, though. The high sight channel that this particular company molded in. Pretty good. I think it was a 43 I showed you on that other one. Does it have adjustable tension? Yep, right here. There's your clip. Simple. I like simple. Big fan of simple. That's a Blade Tech offering if you want. And then we go to Phobus. I used to cover Phobus early in the project and everyone was like, oh, Phobus is crap, man. I would never run Phobus. Uh, I actually like Phobus. They're basically as strong and as good as everything else I'm showing on the table. Pretty much. This one is, I don't know if they still make this one. This is a light equipped Glock 17, which I forgot to bring with me. But it, it's okay. The one thing I don't like about it is that it had exposed screws on this iteration. Uh, I should say rivet backs. And so you could scratch your gun all up. Hey, bro, I don't mind scratching the gun up, but I just don't do it stupidly. You know, I'm not doing it gratuitously. Hey, I want to scratch my gun up just because it looks cool. No, it has to be honest where. And, uh, you know, I don't know if they have some plastic over there. But it, it, was, it was inexpensive. It was uh, lightweight, still is. And it works. And it's, it's versatile for any number of lights. So what you'll do with this, and this is a G17 coming in here. Uh, that's a 19. Let's use this one right here. It actually has a bore stud that will go in there and stabilize the gun. And this is one that I would probably recommend putting armor all onto. So you can get it out quicker. And so your draw on this one would be a thumb break. And then you pop it out a uh, that way it actually in, in some ways is a retention holster there's your bore stud right there and no it won't hurt your gun voice of experience the criticism i heard years ago on this like well you know someone come up behind you they can rotate and break these rivets and take your gun from you uh pretty much most of the holster systems that civilians use you could say that would be the case um unless it's one of those really super secure g-clip one so the guy's gonna have a hard time getting them out but he doesn't have to because they don't retain he can just pull them out so here's that pf9 again just by way of reference so it may i mean this clip system isn't ideal but let's say they're g-clips like the desantis they don't have to pull the holster off they just take the gun so i i think that's null and void if someone comes up behind me and tries to take my weapon dude i immediately jack my gun into my holster and hold it and then I will twist my body and get him off my gun. And then if I can, I'll grab his wrist, wrist and rotate it and try to break his wrist. And by that time, I've created enough distance to have the gun come out and decide if I need to shoot. Just saying. That's, that's me. You know, I like, this is a good option, the light equipped Phobos. Here's some simple Phobos holsters right here. And this is for a G26 which is wearing the Heine Straight 8, a favorite holster system, uh, sight system of mine. Let's see if there's any sight rub issues on this. Nope. I've had this holster for about 20 years. Still running strong. I don't wear it all the time, but look how simple it is to put on. Remember, we're not going to a firefight. We're just going to the store to get some milk. You know, do you want to be dicking around for 10 minutes, suiting up, suiting down? I don't. I want the gun to come on. I want it to come off. And it works. And the first rule of the gun applies. How many dudes have we seen that don't have their gun? Why is that? Well, it's probably because their gun's too heavy, too big, or they've chosen a stupid holster system that doesn't work for them. You know, maybe it's the one I've shown. They go, oh, it's too much. It's too much time to put it on. i got to hurry. So they leave the house without the gun. Next thing you know, there's an active shooter situation and they have nothing. Nothing. That's a primary reason I carry. Active shooter. Defending innocent people. Defending myself and my family. There's another one. Labeled. This is for a G17. R34 will work on that too. Love it. Now, is it like a security holster? It's not a security holster, but it does take some force to bring it out. 
here's some magazine carriers from Phobos. And I think it's funny because I pulled these out. I was like, well, these are still excellent. I mean, what? why is this not functional? This is just a single, but you can get a double. It's simple. It retains perfectly. doesn't hold water, and it's cheap. Now, what you may find is with your belt system, the, the showstopper on any of these is if it doesn't secure on your belt system. And so you pull the magazine out, and lo and behold, this doesn't lock in. That, my friends, would be a valid reason not to like the system. Especially if you're in some type of competition or something, or worse yet, a shooting of some sort. Here's an OD Phobus. So it does come in colors. This is for, I think, a 26 as well. But I think the Phobus will work with all all the nine uh, you get any phobus and it'll work with any nine mil you put in it or for that matter a, a 40 caliber version this is one i just uh put in one of my vehicles and this is a new and packaged one but i want to show you this this is a roto security thumb holster this is a phobus product and it just like the blackhawk serpa comes with two different attachment systems so you have an inside the waistband paddle I would say the, the Serpa is higher quality than this for sure. I like it better. And the belt slide is right here and it just has uh, individual rotations with a single screw. Uh, I should say can't adjustments. But the thing I do like about this is it's inexpensive. So if I'm mounting it in a location like a vehicle, it's just super easy to do. Let's put this one in here. And then it has, this is a level two security holster so if someone comes up behind you and tries to take the gun there's nothing there in their system phobus in this particular version which i find to be very fast and intuitive is just a thumb uh, ramp right here you just push now they could still come up twist and break this junction right here but that's your job as the gun holder to make sure they don't get that close and employ some defensive tactics so you bust their ass how's that so maybe an elbow upside the head Hey, we can all be surprised and overpowered. I'm not saying that it can't happen. It happens to police officers all the time. The biggest threat to a police officer is uh, his or her own gun being used against them. That's why they have, uh, I don't know, higher retention holsters. But I do like this one. And you might be thinking, well, you put that in a vehicle. How'd you do it? This is how I did it. I just mounted it and I just did a screw here, 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 and here. And there it sits. <laughs> It's perfect, and it's cheap, man. It didn't cost that much. I love this holster, the Phobus, and that that too isn't on my body, so in a vehicle location, perfect. It doesn't cost much at all. How about the Glock OEM belt slides? Those suck, right? I don't think so. I think they're great, and these are like twelve bucks in Amazon. <laughs> and if you don't like, you know, that they're not conform to you. These are belt slides, of course. They don't have a paddle on them. You can actually, and, and I saw a dude do this, you can actually heat it right here, like with a, a lighter or something, and melt it slightly, and then permanently make it in that shape right there, so it's easier to put on your belt. And these are actually designed to be cut out for thicker belts. So if you have a big, thick, wide, nylon tactical belt or leather belt, you like very carefully with a razor knife, cut that out. Speaking of which, I have on my person, my uh, showed in a lot of reviews. Oh yeah, the Sheffield utility knife. And it'd just be snip, snip, just one segment or one bar right here, and then it fit your belt. So this is for a Glock 21, a Glock 20. Here's our third gen 20 right here. These work, man. They're simple and they work. And they don't cost anything. This is a great BOK holster, a bug out kit holster. Something that if you're choosing to have a Glock and a centerfire option and you're be okay, that's what I'm saying. It's a good option for that. But the retention is good. I wouldn't. I could shake it out if I wanted to. But waterproof and it's made by Glocks, so that means it has a super high quality polymer aesthetic to it. And then I have this one for, well, they'll fit any nine. This, I'll just throw this fourth gen, fourth gen 19 in there. That's a cool rig. The question I would have too is what's quicker to put on, a belt slide holster or one of those composite, you know, like we were talking about, like the DeSantis rig, where did it go? Um, well this, I mean, which one's quicker to put on? This one it takes adjusting in my opinion, because forward and aft takes time, I mentioned all the other stuff, and then when I get home, if it has a G-clip on it, I'm just calling them G-clips, 
like the DeSantis, they don't come off. You know, if I'm going to undo my belt already, I might as well just run a belt slide. Unless you don't have a shirt that can conceal it well. That would be a disadvantage of this style of holster. So it's not inside the waistband, it's belt slide. But generally, I'm wearing my shirt untucked. I can conceal it. But you will have more showings. But a short overall, overall length pistol like a G43, a 26, or even a 19 doesn't have that much barrel protruding. Here's a Galco belt slide. And this is the tactical belt slide. Hey, how did that get here? Ruger LC9S is demonstrating what it's like. And I have one actually right here. This one I bought from Gunnies. Look at his price, dude. It's 35 bucks. Cheap. Freaking cheap. This one's for a nine. Tactical belt slide. Look at that. Simple. Simple. One thing I have found with these belt slides is you want to have a belt that fits the loop completely. You don't want to have a narrower belt because what you can have is some top roll. It'll go like that. So you want to lock down this top and it makes it more secure. Pro tip from Nutton. Your Uncle Nutton. Great holster though. And try it. If you don't like it, throw it in the garbage. Give it to a friend. 35 bucks. It's cheap, dude. Yeah, I like the tactical belt slide. It's a really cool option. Uh, and again, if I'm undoing my belt already, might as well just put on a belt slide. Especially in the winter when you're wearing a coat. These ones sucked. Galco made these, and I don't think they make them anymore. These are like simple plastic belt slide holsters. And I notice where some high sights. Uh, does this have... There's one of these... Well, this one has relatively high sights, so you'll get drag. So it won't even go in because it's fitted with a very narrow and low profile sight channel. Not, not ideal. Not ideal. So I'm going to throw these in the garbage after this review is done. They don't make this one anymore. I don't even know the name of it. But it was a Galco product at the time. But like all companies, they're learning. They're going, hey, you know, we got customer feedback. They didn't like it. Done. This is a great uh, magazine uh, carry thing by a uh, carry thing. Dual mag carrier from Galco. But notice the similarity to the Phobos product. It's riveted at the top. It's made of plastic. And it's simple. And it works. You can run these in competition. They work. Now, if you run them super hard, I mean, over time, are these going to stress and break? Snap, snap, snap. Maybe. This is a Zavari Land product, and this is actually a Canic TP9. But there's something really interesting I want to show you about this. Because I grabbed this, and I was like, well, let's just, you know, you probably do the same thing. We're like, um, I wonder if this will fit other guns. And I didn't think the fit was that great on this, so listen. And this is built for a Canic TP9, right? But I started fooling around, and I was like, well, I wonder if, it, if it's loose with that. Maybe it'll fit like a Glock 20. Perfect. <laughs> I was going to, I bought it from Amazon. I was going to take it back and go, yeah, I don't like the fit on that Canic. I'll get something else. And it was, it was 40 bucks. It's a Safari Land. If I remember the name, I'll tell you. <laughs> And I was like, dang, dude, that fits the Glock 20 great. And it's a retention holster. I mean, their method of retention on the Safari Land is kind of an intuitive, I grab my gun, then I sweep off the level two retention mechanism. That's a look inside right there. Simple plastic holster folded over. And by the way, it comes with a uh, belt slide attachment. And I do have that here in my garbage pile here somewhere if i can find it i will show you here it is so it comes with a tool and i i don't look at the glock 17 i had that mislabeled it's actually apparently a glock 20 holster <laughs> even though it says canic probably like me you have a different a uh, couple different gun systems and you'll go you'll just start experimenting watching tv and you go i wonder if this would work with that holster and i've done it on tabletop before in front of you guys and Dang, son, it works. It's exciting. So I'm going to keep this, but not for the Canic. I guess it'll work with the Canic, but I'm keeping it mostly for the Glock. The Glock. Uh, once upon a year, I talked about this, and this is Tactical Doodles, my son's. One of his favorite, favorite holster systems. And it's just a simple suede Galco inside the waistband with a very uh, positive retaining G-clip. He runs these in most of his guns that he carries. And by the way, he carries some weird stuff. I mean, he'll carry 1911s, he'll carry old school Smith & Wesson revolvers, he'll carry heavy stuff. <laughs> he doesn't care. Go to his channel, dude. I keep telling him to post more videos, like, 
feed your channel dude you're so funny i can't change my kids though they are what they are and this is for a 26 so let's see how it works this is fresh i mean it's not broken in a leather product holster will take some break in so it's going to fit really tight as we'd want it to and then we're going to store it in there and i gotta go down all the way and then i won't snap it here but you get the picture again this is fast it's easy there's no width created we don't have that big you know the double clip and composite kydex you know what was considered cool but you know what when i do gear checks i see a lot of these i see a simple suede system it may not be a galco but ones like it and guys like it they're like yeah i like it it works for me welcome to reality i mean what you there's a, often a disconnect between reality and what you see and read on the internet everyone acts like oh yeah this is the best system then when you check them they're like they're carrying a 25 auto in a pocket holster <laughs> i'm not even kidding you that's what happens this is a serpa with a belt slide on it by the way and this is the older version that used to have these uh, adjustments so they have the the movable tabs now and now we're going to end the video with something kind of fun we got one two three four five six seven eight freaking glocks on the table that's worth watching the video just by itself don't you think just that uh what we're going to go to is my go bag and these are the uh, 511 go bags that i reviewed separately look up the video uh youtube doesn't let me annotate anymore so i can't annotate the video no one was clicking on anyhow so look it up say nothing fancy go bag or something like that 511 and i go through it top to bottom so it's ar 10 or ar 15 ready we've got flex cuffs in here we have a knife flashlight it's basically a active shooter response kit and some cards pin i think i have a level one plus in the back and then i have a g22 oh i forgot i had this in here um we got nine glocks by the way so I do have a light system. This is that Phobos I told you about and how I like it. So here I integrated it, and I think I talked about it in the system, with screws. So it's a very inexpensive system. I melted some holes in it, screwed it through a black uh, back plate on the 511, and then I'll just rotate it out, and out comes a Glock 22 with a TLR3 on it. And this is hot. This is coming out of a system. Not cocked, as you can tell. So this looks like gold dots, uh, 165s or 180s sick system so look at how that works i mean and it's not light specific the thing i see about a lot of light holsters i don't like is they're built for a specific light they're like hey you got to get this surefire light and and that's the one it works with well what if i don't want that surefire light well then it doesn't work <laughs> you know forget it this one works uh and then we have this is a max edition double uh magazine carrier velcro backed holy crap i forgot that's where that was dude i freaking got my infidel in here that comes out that's not worthy to dedicate it to a go back i bet you i left it in there from the review and then we've got 20 round mags whatever they are in 40. sick that's a major firepower there that's a hard hitting caliber still and then i have another mag on this side go back that's cool so this is an over the shoulder situation do i walk around with this all the time flex the cuffs in the back no no i don't it's heavy it's a lot of weight in there because these are one two three four fully loaded ar-15 mags and this is when i will use the magazine lip protector by the way you can see it's xm193 i'm rocking on there i like how hot that stuff is so it just kind of protects a few lips over time stored a lot used never and that's uh totally fine by me that's exactly the way i want all my guns to be played with recreational never used i will love it if that's the case never this is a smaller go back and i wanted to show you this holster this is called the hazard ford it's 13 bucks and it is pretty awesome so it's a velcro back holster so if you have something like this go back bag and you want to put it in this is what you rock dude look at that and it's adjustable i think i have it set up for a glock 17 22 style maybe a 19 no it's 17 look at that 13 dollars it's probably made in the same uh, factory where the condor products made and then as we open our go bag just a quick thumb break super uh max Edition makes one like it i actually like the this one the hazard 4 a little bit better 
one it's not in black so i can see the holster and kind of adjust it i mean you can see it has velcro and a nice quality thumb snap i like the materials 13 bucks here's another max edition double magazine retention thingy and i'll uh probably put the link to that i got these off amazon these 511 bags are awesome they are so excellent i love them because they're so versatile as you can see let's see what load i got in these I think it was 124 grain gold dot is what that is. 124 grain gold dot. Plus P's actually. Love that load. Ass police baton, two AR mags, and some other stuff in here. Huh, maybe I got another infidel in here. What? <laughs> Fancy, how do you lose track of an infidel? Uh, it happens, bro. There's a lot of stuff. I mean, all these systems, they're, they're complex. Uh, I'm ending the video, dudes. That was fun. Dang, that was fun. Um, choose a system that works for you. Again, you're probably going to go through some gr growth and some learning as you see a Godfather, Infidel's taken over, as you go through different systems and kind of figure out what, what uh, works for you and what doesn't. Old T38 patch coming in. Um, but again, value is kind of where I go. It doesn't mean I wouldn't buy a more expensive holster but I would have to find a trusted voice. So someone I trusted, maybe TMP, and they said, hey, that's a good system, then maybe I'd spring for it, um, but experiment and find it. Uh, these are some of my favorites, and most of them are pretty, pretty excellent, especially for the money. Um, I'll end with this. Hey, if you're a concealed carry permit holder, please join the National Rifle Association. Keep your membership current. Never let your guard down with Second Amendment defense. Never, never, never. Also, use uh, good good reason, good value systems when you carry. Always try to avoid conflict. Avoid problems if at all possible. Do everything you can to preserve human life. But if things go south and you're the only one around, then you might have to make that hard call. And if that's the case, uh, a carry system and the gun that is in that carry system will save lives. Nothing.